15. The only by me revealed and given event of the thumbs is an intense invasion of the frontal line by my avatarically self-transmitted divine transcendental spiritual force of love bliss, beginning at the crown of the head and descending into the lower vital region to the bodily base. The pressure or invasive force of this event may be rather and even happily overwhelming and it must be allowed. At last, it is not possible nor would you wish to defend your psychophysical self against this invading pressure of my divine avataric transcendental spiritual descent. It feels like a solid and yet fluid mass of force, like a large hand all made of thumbs, pressing down from infinitely above the mind and the crown of the head, and via the crown of the head, engorging the total head and the throat, and thus and thereby penetrating and banishing the entire mind, and vastly opening the emotional core, and altogether infilling the total physical body. The feeling sense that results from this simple and most basic frontal infilling by my avatarically self-transmitted divine transcendental spiritual presence is that the total body-mind complex is sublimed and released into ego surrendering, ego forgetting and ego transcending feeling identification with the spherical form of my own divine and transcendental spiritual and all in all surrounding and all in all pervading love bliss body of indefinable transcendental spiritual brightness or indestructible light. This simple and most basic form of the thumbs is a necessary although at first only occasional, experience associated with the tangible locating and knowing of my avatarically self-transmitted divine transcendental spirit baptism. The simple and most basic spherical fullness of the thumbs must be firmly established in its tangible evidence in the context of the by me transcendentally spiritually awakened and transcendentally spiritually, fully technically responsible, practice of the radical reality way of Adidam Vashiradam. As the transcendental spiritual process matures within, within the context of the frontal yoga of the radical reality way of Adidam Vashiradam, the simple and most basic experience of the thumbs must become a more and more constant yogic event and on random occasions the experience of the thumbs must occur in its full and complete form as the true samadhi of the thumbs. In that full and complete case of the experience of the thumbs my descending transcendental spiritual fullness will completely overwhelm the ordinary frontal or natural human sense of bodily existence. My avatarically self-transmitted divine transcendental spiritual current will move fully down in the frontal line to the bodily base and it will then turn about and without vacating the frontal line it will pass also into the spinal line. This yogic event will occur with such force that you will feel utterly love blissfully intoxicated and there will be the feeling that the body is somehow rotating forward and down from the crown of the head as well as backward and up from the base of the spine. This rotation will seem suddenly to complete itself and the experience will suddenly be one of feeling released from confinement to the gross physical body, such that you feel 
you are present as an intrinsically egoless energy body, previously limited by and bound to the confines of the gross physical body. But now, by means of my avatarically self-transmitted divine transcendental spiritual grace, infused by and conformed to my avatarically self-transmitted divine body of self-evidently divine transcendental spiritual energy. You will feel this energy body to be spherical in shape, centerless, empty or void, of centre, mind and familiar ego I, and boundless as if even bodiless or without form, although somehow and partially also yet associated with, while rotating from and beyond, your ordinary psychophysical form. The ordinary references of the body myself and the environment will, in this divine yogic event, not make much sense or, in any manner, affect this experience of the thumbs, although there may be some superficial and entirely non-limiting awareness of the body, the room or the physical environment of the body, and so forth. This experience would last for a few moments, or a few minutes, or for an extended period of indefinite length. Nevertheless, just when this spontaneous transcendental spiritual experience has become most pleasurable, such that you somehow gesture to make it continue indefinitely, the ordinary sense of the body myself will suddenly, spontaneously return. The thumbs is not a process of going somewhere else, nor is it even a process of vacating the gross physical body or the gross physical realm altogether. Rather, the thumbs is a process of transformation of the experiencing of the present physical experience circumstance. If the present physical circumstance is left behind such that experiential reference to the gross physical realm is entirely absent and there is total loss of awareness of the physical context in which the presumed spiritual experience began, then the practitioner of the radical reality way of Adidam and Shiradam is necessarily experiencing a form of samadhi or of otherwise presumed spiritual absorption other than the thumbs. In the thumbs, awareness of the physical context of experience is not lost, but it is rather totally changed, so that Instead of the self-conscious, self-contracted shape of the waking state personality, one's physical form is found to be an intrinsically egoless and boundlessly self-radiant sphere, without thickness of surface or any centre at all. With this profound shift in the awareness of the physical body, the differentiation inherent in the usual waking state, body consciousness disappears and is effectively replaced by egoless body consciousness. A rephasing of the energy construct of bodily awareness and spatial awareness occurs, such that physical body and physical space are tacitly sensed in a manner entirely different from ordinary perception or psychophysical ego consciousness. And as soon as there is any effort to recollect the usual sense of bodily form or of the circumstance of physical embodiment, the transcendental spiritual experience of the thumbs disappears. The thumbs continues only as long as it is effortlessly allowed to happen without any egoic self-consciousness or psychophysical self-contraction, and it 
spontaneously vanishes when egoic self-consciousness or psychophysical self-contraction returns. Sixteen. I say the only real accourse of God or truth itself is the one and only and inherently non-dual reality itself, which is the intrinsically egoless and utterly indivisible and perfectly subjective and indestructibly non-objective self-nature, self-condition, source-condition and self-state of all and all. Therefore, I characteristically have no religious interests other than to demonstrate and to exemplify and to prove and to self-reveal truth or reality or real a causal God itself. 17. The true fifth stage mystical or esoteric spiritual process is, principally, associated with the progressive inner perceptual and thus subtle mental unveiling of the total internally perceptible pattern or abstractly experienced structure of the individual body-mind self or body-brain self. The abstract pattern or internal structure of the body-mind self or body-mind self is universally the same in the case of any and every body-mind brain, body-brain mind complex or conditionally manifested form or state or being within the cosmic domain. The abstract pattern or internal structure of the body-mind self or body-brain self necessarily by virtue of its native and therefore inseparable inherence in the totality of the cosmic domain itself, duplicates, or is a conditionally manifested pattern duplicate of, the primary pattern or fundamental conditional structure of the total cosmic domain. The conditional body-mind self, or any body-mind, brain-mind complex is, in reality, not a merely separate someone or an entirely different something, as if the body or the brain or the mind were reducible to a someone or a something utterly independent or non-dependent and existing entirely in and of itself. Therefore, the entire body-mind self or egoic body-brain self is itself to be transcended in the context of the only by me revealed and given seventh stage of life in and by means of utterly non-separate and non-different and intrinsically egoless participation in that which is always already the case or the inherently non-dual and indivisible self-nature, self-condition and self-state that is reality itself. 18. I declare that, if it is, by Siddha Grace, moved beyond the limits of the waking, dreaming and sleeping ego structures, the Siddha Yoga or Shaktipat Yoga, process of fifth stage unveiling culminates or may culminate at least eventually in and indeed it is always already centred upon the fifth stage revelation in fully ascended Nirvikarpa Samadhi of the true Mahabindu or formless place or origin otherwise traditionally called Sunya, or empty, or void. That true and indivisible and indefinable Mahabindu is the revelation via the vertical extended structures of conditional ascent in the fifth stage mode 
of the only true whole in the universe, or the one and indivisible and indefinable and self-evidently divine source point, infinitely above the body, the brain and the mind. That absolutely single and formless Mahabindu is the true absolute point of condition, or formless and colourless, or non-objective and therefore not lighted, black hole, from which to the point of view of any objectified or lighted place or entity itself, the or any total cosmic domain of conditionally arising forms, states and beings, appears to emanate in an all and all objectifying Big Bang. That Mahabindu is the fifth stage conditionally revealed upper terminal of Atmanadi, or of the self-channel of connection to the true divine heart, which self-evidently divine heart is always already seated immediately beyond the internally felt seat of the sinoatrial node in the right side of the bodily apparent heart. That Mahabindu is in the context of the sixth stage of life, the esoteric doorway too, and in the context of the only by me revealed and given seventh stage of life, in the only by me revealed and given radical reality way of Adidami Shiradam, the esoteric doorway from or of the perfectly subjective heart domain, which is the true self nature, self condition source condition and self-state of the transcendentally spiritually self-bright divine love bliss current of divine self-realization and which is itself the self-existing self-radiant intrinsically egoless and perfectly subjective or perfectly indivisible non-dual and non-objective conscious light that is reality itself, and which, in the only by me revealed and given seventh stage realization of divine translation, stands self revealed as is in the intrinsic heart unity of Atmanadi, and as the non different divine bright spherical self domain, the infinite centerless and boundless midnight sun and perfect space, in and as, which all separateness, all difference, and even all and all is perfectly, divinely outshined. 19. The fifth stage yogic process of the progressive inner unveiling of the pattern or structure of the cosmic domain is demonstrated in the Siddha Yoga or Shaktipat Yoga, tradition of Kundalini Yoga, via the progressive experiencing or re-experiencing in reverse order or from base to crown of the total pattern of all the structural forms that comprise the hierarchically composed body-mind self or body-brain self via a progressively body-mind-self reflecting or body-brain-self reflecting display of inner perceptual objects or apparently objectified phenomenal states, conditions and patterns of cosmic light. That process of the inner perceptual unveiling of the hierarchical structure, pattern and contents of the conditionally manifested body-mind-self or body-brain-self culminates or may culminate at least eventually in the vision in occasional or otherwise constant Savikarva Samadhi of the blue bindu or the blue pill as well as various other objectified inner lights such as the red, the white and the black or even the vision of the total cosmic mandala 
of many concentric rings of colour, including the central blue bindu, with its brilliant white five-pointed star at the centre. In any case, the possibly perceived abstract inner light, or any bindu, or point, or mandala, or complex abstract vision of inwardly perceived light, is merely and necessarily a display of the functional root point of the brain's perception of conditionally manifested uni universal light or merely cosmic light itself. However, if the great process of fifth stage or unveiling is thus continued, the objectified inner Bindu vision and Savikarpa Samadhi itself is, in due course, transcended in fully ascended Nirvikarpi Samadhi, such that there is the great yogic event of penetration of and into the true intrinsically formless, non-objective and objectless Mahabindu, infinitely above the body, the brain and the mind. That great yogic event was, in fact and in truth, what occurred in the priorly rather than, than conditionally established manner, in my own case, in my room, immediately after I was blessed by Swami Baba Maktananda of Ganeshpuri and Rang Avad Ut in the garden of Baba Maktananda's Ganeshpuri Ashram in 1968. The great yogic event of penetration of the true Mahabindu, which occurred in my own case in 1968, is, in, extra in its extraordinary particulars, a unique example within the history of the great tradition of spontaneous, complete and priorly ascended penetration of all the chakras or centres or points or structures of the conditionally manifested body-mind self or body-brain self, simultaneous with sudden priorly ascended Nirvikarpi samadhi, samadhi or immediate penetration to beyond the total cosmic and psychophysical context of subject-object relations. The phenomenon of sudden rather than progressive Conditional ascent is described in the fifth stage yogic traditions as the greatest and rarest of the demonstrations of yogic ascent as compared to progressive or gradual demonstrations shown via stages of inner ascent, via internal visions, lights, auditions and so on. In my unique case, it was only subsequently, or always thereafter, and even now, that the universal cosmic pattern, or vertically perceptible great cosmic structure, and the universally extended pattern, or vertically perceptible inner cosmic structure, of the body, the brain and the mind, and the horizontal inner primary structure, or the three stations of the heart, were and are directly and systematically and completely unveiled in a constant spontaneous display, both apparently objective and perfectly subjective within my divine avataric vision. In the event of priorly ascended Nirvikarpa Samadhi in 1968, the intrinsically limited nature of fully ascended Nirvikarpa Samadhi as it has been conditionally realised as the supreme goal of the fifth stage yogic traditions became immediately clear to me. Directly out of the event of priorly ascended Nirvikarpa Samadhi I was tacitly aware that the realisation of conditionally ascended Nirvikarpa Samadhi necessarily depended on the exercise and on a unique 
precise attitude and arrangement of the conditional apparatus and intrinsically hierarchical pattern of the body, the brain and the mind and of attention and that therefore that realization was yet conditionally dependent or psychophysically supported and necessarily or in that sense limited or yet only a temporary stage in the progressive process of unveiling and therefore non-final. That is to say, it was inherently obvious to me that any and all internal or otherwise psychophysical experiencing necessarily requires the exercise by attention of the root position and the conditionally arising psychophysical apparatus of conditionally arising self-consciousness or of the separate and separative psychophysical ego I. I immediately concluded that unless the process of realization could transcend the very structure and pattern of ego-based experiencing and the very structure and pattern of ego-based experiencing and the very structure and pattern of the conditionally manifest cosmic its cosmos itself, realization would itself necessarily be limited, as in the case of conditionally ascended Nirvikarpa Samadhi, by the same subject object or ego versus object dichotomy that otherwise characterizes even all ordinary or non mystical experience. Even though, in the event of priorly ascended Nirvikarpa Samadhi, which does not depend on any manipulation of attention or even any manipulation of all of the mechanics or psychology and physiology of the body-mind-self, the perception-conception or psychophysical presumption of a separate self was effortlessly transcended. The subsequent return of the apparent limitations and dependencies associated with experiential conditionally conditionality suggested to me an even greater event or process or reawakening was yet required if there is to be the indivisibly perfect realization I tacitly and brightly always already knew to be the one and only case. Therefore, I persisted in my divine avataric submission process until the unveiling became inherently most perfect or seventh stage and intrinsically egoless, reawakening to divine self-realization inherently beyond all phenomenal or conditional dependencies or supports and infinitely and divinely transcending all phenomenal or conditional bondage or limitation. 20. On September the 10th, 1970, the great divine avataric process of my sardana year submission by descent into the cosmic domain of coincidence and identification with all and all culminated in limitless or most perfectly non-conditional Realization of the self-evidently divine self-nature, self-condition, source-condition and self-state, of the cosmic domain itself, and of all forms, states and beings within the cosmic domain. In that most perfect event, I, then and now, and forever hereafter, as always already before, stand most perfectly self-established, as the bright, the one and only conscious light, the very and perfectly subjective and intrinsically egoless or perfectly non-separate and inherently perfect and indivisible or perfectly non-dual and always already self-existing and eternally self-radiant 
and self-evidently divine self-nature, self-condition, source-condition, and self-state that is the one and only and true divine a causal person and reality and truth of all and all, and that was and is the constant transcendental spiritual sign and identity of this, my divine avataric lifetime, even from birth. Even though it was and is so, a Baba Muktananda did not, and because of the yet fifth stage nature of his own experiential realization, for which, for which he found corrobor corroboration in traditional mystical and philosophical traditions of the fifth stage and phenomena based type, could not positively acknowledge my summation relative to most perfect and necessarily seventh stage divine self-realization because he characteristic characteristically preferred to dwell upon inner objects Baba Muktananda in the naive manner of fourth and fifth stage mystics in general interpreted reality itself or divine self-realization itself to require inner perceptual phenomena or conditionally arising experiences and presumptions as a necessary support for realization itself. That is to say, Baba Muktananda was experientially conformed to the fifth stage presumption that divine self realization not only requires conditionally arising and especially inner perceptual phenomenal experiences as a generally necessary and even inevitable yogic spiritual preliminary to authentic and not merely conceptual realization. And I completely agree with him that there are certainly that there certainly are many conditionally apparent yogic spiritual requirements that must be demonstrated in the full course of the authentic and necessarily psychophysical sadhana of divine self-realization. But Baba Muktananda otherwise generally affirmed the presumption that realization itself and not only the sadhana or psychophysical process of realizing requires and is even identical to conditional or psychophysical and especially absorptive mystical or inner visual and auditory and otherwise sensory based and brain and nervous system patterned supports. Indeed, that limiting presumption relative to the dependence of realization itself upon conditional supports is the fundamental limitation of all fifth stage traditions and of even all the exoteric and esoteric and necessarily ego based and psychophysically based seeking traditions within the collective great tradition of humankind. Therefore, Ababa Muktananda affirmed an attention-based and object-oriented or goal-oriented and therefore ego-based or seeker-based, absorptive, mystical and altogether fifth-stage yogic way in which the Sahasra or the upper terminal of the brain and even the total brain or sensorium is the constant focus and the ultimate goal as well as the higher seat of sadhana. Twenty one. As I indicated to Baba Muktananda in our meetings in nineteen seventy and nineteen seventy three, the regenerated form of Atmanadi is rooted in consciousness itself located beyond the right side of the bodily apparent heart, which is itself merely the self-evident seat 
or doorway of the direct locating or perfectly subjective and intrinsically egoless consciousness itself or the self-existing tacit self-apprehension of being itself prior to attention itself. That regenerated form of Atmanadi is brightly extended to the Mahabindu, which is infinitely ascended above and beyond the Sahasra and to the midnight sun, which is my divine self-domain, the non-different sphere of the bright itself, always already beyond or prior to, and always already more than above, the body-mind-self and the cosmic domain. Seventh stage divine self-realization intrinsically transcends both the conditional or psychophysical vertical apparatus of the brain or of the Sahasra, which is the conditional seat of realization proposed in the fifth stage traditions of mystical absorption and the conditional or psychophysical horizontal apparatus of the heart or, in particular, of the right side of the bodily apparent heart which is the conditional seat of realization proposed by Ramana Maharshi and usually in a more generalized manner within the six day traditions of transcendental practice. 22. The divine avataric radical transcendental spiritual reality way of Adidam Vishiradam is the practice and at maturity the perfect practice of Atma Nadi Shakti Yoga or the Yoga of Atma Bindu or the egoless root point or source point or heart root of consciousness itself at and always perfectly prior to the right side of the bodily apparent heart and Atmanadi or the self-existing and self-radiant heart current extending from the heart root to the accoursal matrix of all conditional appearances infinitely above the head and the mind. Atmanadi Shakti Yoga is the searchless transcendental spiritual reality way of the intrinsically and perfectly egoless heart centre of self-existing and self-radiant divine conscious light. The transcendental spiritual practice of Atma Nadi Shakti Yoga is always priorly and thus searchlessly and intrinsically egolessly established in the divine self-condition that self-radiates via and always perfectly prior to the right side of the bodily apparent heart and via the S-curved nerve of transcendental spiritual love bliss extended from the right side of the bodily apparent heart to infinitely above the crown of the head self-shining from the centerless and boundless space infinitely above the body and the mind and from thence descending and ascending in the bodily circle and in the event randomly inhaled in descent and exhaled in ascent. In the case of the perfect practice that transcendental spiritual process of Atmanadi Shakti Yoga is continually engaged by the perfect form of Samraj Yoga engaged as radical self-abiding and radical transcendental spirit conductivity. The preliminary practice of perfect knowledge awakens tacit establishment in and as the witness position of consciousness itself. Such tacit establishment in and as the witness position of consciousness itself is an absolutely essential aspect of right foundation preparation 
for the transcendental spiritual process in my divine avataric company, so that my devotees do not wrongly approach me on the basis of presenting themselves to me as a body, as a mind, and as an egoic self, to be filled by my divine avataric self-transmission. The radical reality way of Adidam Rishiradam is not about presenting yourself to me as a psychophysical persona to be infilled by my divine avataric self-transmission, as if the seventh stage of life-based radical reality way of Adidam Rishiradam could be engaged in the manner of the traditions associated with the fourth and the fifth stages of life. There certainly must be whole bodily or total psychophysical devotional turning to me, but that whole bodily devotional turning to me is not the most fundamental qualification for the transcendental spiritual process in my divine avataric company. The most fundamental qualification for the transcendental spiritual process in my divine avataric company is to be tacitly and priorly established moment to moment in the intrinsically ego-transcending disposition that is always already perfectly prior to the body-mind self. 23. The conditional root and foundation of the transcendental spiritual life is at the bodily apparent heart. The bodily apparent heart is a complex mechanism consisting of three primary regions. The left side of the bodily apparent heart is associated with the waking state, the frontal line and the gross dimension of conditionally manifested existence and thus with ordinary emotions and the physical action of the heart. The middle region of the bodily apparent heart or the heart chakra or anahata chakra is associated with the dreaming state, the spinal line and the subtle dimension of conditionally manifested existence and is thus the place of the feeling dreamer, the place of visions. The right side of the bodily apparent heart associated with the state of deep sleep and the causal dimension of conditionally manifested existence and physically associated with the pacemaker that generates the heart beating rhythms all across the chest from right to left is the root of egoic self-awareness. The region of the left side of the bodily apparent heart includes the physical and lower psychic functions of the heart. The left side of the bodily apparent heart is the ground of early life development. In the only by me revealed and given transcendental spiritual process, the heart awakens from the left to the middle or the subtle and higher psychic region, such that the fully transcendentally spiritualizing process occurs in the domain of the frontal personality, within and beyond the context of the first three stages of life. As devotional communion with me and devotional surrender to me and transcendental spiritual locating and knowing of me become more and more profound, there is a growing awareness of all the subtle and greater psychic or deep psychological functions of the heart, which are the functions of the middle station of the bodily apparent heart. When, through the graceful means given by me and as me, my devotee awakens to the realisation of intrinsic self-identification with the witness position of consciousness itself, he or she is thus and thereby established in inherent association with the right side of the bodily apparent heart. When all three regions of the bodily apparent heart are awake, 
all three simultaneously and not just one or two. There is complete living self-identification with the self-regent and self-existing divine self-nature, transcendental spiritual self-condition and perfectly egoless self-state of reality itself, which is the true divine heart itself. The true divine heart is not merely or itself the elemental or physical heart or the gross physical and psychological and worldly or grossly exteriorized heart domain on the left side bound as it is to its round of reactive and separative and even otherwise seeking and reunion emotions and patterned desires. The true divine heart is not merely or itself the heart chakra or the heart in the middle or the heart of the interior of mystical psychic and brain and nervous system based subtle psychophysical and cosmic spiritual objects. The true divine heart is not merely or itself the heart on the right side or the causal heart domain, which is the seat of the self-perpetuating presumption of illusory self-identity, or of the psychophysically located and fixed point of view, and the consequent illusory entity idea of separate ego I. Rather, the true divine heart or self-existing and transcendentally spiritually self-regent reality itself, is itself, the causal and non-conditional and always perfectly prior root condition or perfect self-condition and the perfectly egoless or non-separate, all-in-all-pervading, locationless, identityless, objectless, problem-free, searchless, goless, intrinsically actionless, altogether differenceless, and thus perfectly a causal space, and the self evidently divine and all and all transcending conscious light of all three domains of the bodily apparent heart, left, middle and right, or gross, subtle and causal, always all at once, or as and always prior unity. The true divine heart is the perfectly egoless foundation of seventh stage of life divine self-awakening. In the demonstration process of seventh stage of life divine self-awakening, the true divine heart perfectly egolessly and perfectly a causally self radiates its own perfectly indivisible transcendental spiritual energy to the perfect space infinitely above the crown of the head and perfectly above the totality of mind and from thence throughout the nervous system to the bodily base and to the feet and intrinsic to the every moment of that seventh stage of light demonstration process all in all that apparently and conditionally arises is tacitly, divinely self-recognized in and of and as the egoless and indivisible in the causal self-nature, self-condition and self-state of the true divine heart itself. The realization of the true divine heart is the ultimate though never most perfectly attained, goal of the great path of return. Therefore, sorry, the realization of the true divine heart is the ultimate, though never most perfectly attained, goal of the great path of return. Therefore, realization of the true divine heart is traditionally understood to be possible only at the end of a long course of spiritual practice. 
In truth, the true divine heart is not the goal, but the foundation of all right and true practice and realization. Why work to find God at the end when devotional communion with real God can and should be the content of your life of practice from the beginning? This is my question to you. This is a consideration that is fundamental to my divine avataric and always an entirely seventh stage of life-based reality teaching. 24. No matter what arises as your experience or knowledge, whether gross or subtle or causal, and whether of body or of mind, you are the witness of it, and that which is the witness is consciousness itself. No matter what arises, you are consciousness itself. You are never really, or in truth, separately identical to, or even really, or in truth, limited by, what is apparently objective or functionally objectified to you. But you tend to feel or presume specific or separate identification with, or otherwise limitation by, objective or objectified conditions until you are able to inspect and to be intrinsically and inherently perfectly self-identified with your real or native or intrinsic and inherently perfect situation, which is always already free or a causally self-existing consciousness itself, the inherently free subject or perfectly subjective being in the apparent context of conditional objects or of apparently objectified light and who, it must be realised, is the accausally self-existing, accausally self-radiant and self-evidently divine self-nature, self-condition and self-state or intrinsic being or reality person of the one and only and intrinsically indivisible and intrinsically egoless conscious light that is always already prior to conditional objects and always already prior to apparently objectified light or apparently ob objectified transcendental spiritual energy itself. The right side of the bodily apparent heart is the bodily seat associated with but not identical to the intrinsically egoless and non-separate and always perfectly prior and perfectly indivisible and perfectly a causal and altogether perfectly non-different witness position of consciousness itself, which itself transcends all bodily seats and locations and which apparently witnesses and yet is always already prior to the conditional I or the self-contraction and which thus apparently witnesses, inspects and intrinsically or always already transcends the body-mind complex, the conditional states of waking, dreaming and sleeping, the presumption of an individual or separate conscious self and altogether the presumption of spatially and temporary located and thus separate point of view. The by me transcendentally spiritually self-revealed witness consciousness inherently confesses or tacitly feels, I am not the one who wakes or dreams or sleeps. I am the witness of all these states and thus of all conditional states of body or body-mind or mind and likewise of all unperfect states of all samadhis that are in a conditional manner dependent upon body or body-mind or mind or point of view. 
To stand as the witness consciousness is not merely a matter of presuming the witness position to be the case, based on your idealizing of the witness consciousness or your philosophical or verbal arguing for the facts of it and so on. Yet, the witness position is true of you in any case, but it must be intrinsically, priorly and tacitly self-realized to be so. The witness position must be self-evidently the case, not merely, so to speak, on call, whenever you gather the faculties to notice that it is the case. When the witness position is, by means of my avatarically self-transmitted divine transcendental spiritual grace, transcendentally spiritually realized, realized to be your position or your most prior nature, condition and state, then you are able to continue the process of devotional and transcendental spiritual communion with me in the non-different and non-separate manner characteristic of the intrinsically egoless domain of consciousness itself on the perfectly subjective other side of the doorway of attention. 25. The natural or psychophysically patterned ego is identified with the body-mind complex and imagine and, and imagines that it is doing the actions of the body and thinking the thoughts of the mind. Thus, the usual human being imagines that actions and thoughts are caused by a self that is actively doing them. The illusion of the ego is that it is causing its own experiences and otherwise that its experiences are being caused from without. The presumption that there is an active ego doing things and that the active ego must therefore do other things in order to free itself from the effects of what it has done is the root source of the great search. The effort to cure the separate self or the soul of its bondage its attachments, its associations and its effects is fundamental to the search of the first six stages of life. However, in truth, the divine self-nature, self-condition and self-state of reality itself is inherently actionless and intrinsically free. 26. At the foundation of all right, true and progressively unfolding first congregation practice of Adi Damashiradam, there is radical or tacit, perfectly prior and at the root reality intuition, progressively demonstrating and a causally self-magnifying all of the implications and the eventual perfect practice and finally the seventh stage most perfect demonstration of always prior self-establishment in the actionless, a causal and intrinsically egoless self-nature, self-condition and self-state of reality itself. In that cause of first communication practice, many perfect observations are inevitably and spontaneously made. It is observed that consciousness itself is not thinking thoughts. It is observed that consciousness itself is not animating the body. It is observed that consciousness itself does not have any problems. However, it is also observed that consciousness can apparently volunteer itself to identify with thoughts and actions and with the process of their emerging. It is observed that in actuality it is a psychophysical pattern of ego self that is thinking thoughts. By means of engaging the preliminary perfect practice 
the perfect knowledge listening process that is a tacit, radically intuitive awareness or intrinsic observation that it is the body-brain complex rather than any kind of separate inner self or otherwise consciousness itself that generates or causes thoughts and actions. Thus, it is observed that the ego self and not consciousness itself is altogether the source of identification with the body-mind complex and therefore with the brain process in the context of the body. The ego self is an illusory I. The illusory I is not the basis or practice of the radical reality way of Adidam Rishiradam. <laughs>